Yes, we appear to be up there. Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you to St. Bart's Church here for Pentecost um, 2021. Whether you're joining us on Facebook live or later in the day or on Zoom, a very warm welcome to you. We're going to begin our service by singing our first hymn. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord, uh, Lord God, come from the four winds of breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104 verses 25 through 35 and 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works and wisdom. You have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships and there is the Leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, along with Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. And these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Now, this was what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Glory. Christ. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, 
but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will take my words and speak through them. Take our hearts and speak to them. But each of us may hear your word today through christ our lord amen so today is pentecost we have the familiar story from the acts of the apostles and we have a gospel reading about the spirit and what the spirit does that reading is full of texts and any one of them I could almost pick out and preach a sermon on. One that I've never preached on, but I'm always tempted is, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Probably I ought to drop that into the sermon after the first half hour. That is a joke in case you didn't realize. You know, the story of Pentecost, like many biblical stories, is terribly familiar to us. We could almost recite it in our sleep. What would it have been like to be there when you don't know what will happen, when the end of the story is still hidden? I wonder how the disciples felt. You know, 50 days ago, it was Easter. And we heard of them frightened and cowering and terrified that the authorities were going to come and arrest them and they would share Jesus' fate and be crucified. Today, we see an enormous change. Those frightened men are boldly out in the street proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ to anyone who will listen and probably anyone who will not listen as well. They are fearless in their proclamation. What has happened to them? What has changed them? The answer is that they have seen the risen Jesus. He has ascended to heaven and they have done what he said. Wait in the city until the Spirit comes upon you, until the Advocate comes. And what will the Advocate do? He will testify on my behalf, says Jesus. You also, to the disciples, are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. They testify and they witness to what they know. And they do so because God was with them and God was leading them and the Spirit was providing the strength they needed. The same call is on us as Christians to testify to what God has done. And we know how the disciples responded, how they trusted God, how they stepped out in faith and God gave them the power through the Holy Spirit to do what he called them to do. How does this apply to us? We know that God can give us the same power, the same strength that he gave to those first disciples. And I find myself thinking, why are we so timid? when it comes to proclaiming what Jesus has done. I remember a friend of mine preaching in Pentecost once who said, 
but his life had been saved by an amazing surgeon who had treated him after his heart attack. And he felt that he wanted to go and tell everybody how wonderful Mr. Taylor was because he had saved his life. And he found himself thinking, why are we so reluctant to talk about what Jesus has done for us when it is worth so much more than that surgeon had done for him? But let's step back as to how the disciples would have felt before the Holy Spirit came upon them. They knew that they were facing change. They knew that Jesus had left them, but they were called to do something new. They knew they were called to step out in faith. They had no idea where it would lead. St. Peter led to his crucifixion in Rome. St. Peter called to preach to the first Gentile Christians in the house of Cornelius, knowing he would face opposition among Jewish Christians who thought that this gospel was not to be shared with the Gentiles. St. Thomas, who faced his doubts and touched the sign of Jesus, and who tradition tells us traveled all the way to India and founded a church there, today called the Martoma Church, Toma, T-H-O-M-A, the beginning of the name of Thomas. We face change, don't we? Our society has been turned upside down because of COVID. But now we face the change of regathering and the risks that brings. In St. Bart's, we face the change of a new rector. We wait anxiously to see who will apply for this position now that it's advertised. We know that the days will not be the same as they used to be. COVID has changed us. Other things change us always. We know there will be change. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it will be different. Are we ready to change? Because if we're not ready to face change, we're not ready to follow Christ. Because following Christ means life changes. One of the things I did years ago, in 1989, I led a delegation of young adults from Wales to visit South Africa. We were standing in solidarity with the church of the province of Southern Africa in their challenges to apartheid. And I remember one white South African saying to me, I know we need to change, but I just hope things will be the same. It seemed to me a very Anglican Episcopal response. We know things will change, but we hope things will be the same. And it can't be, can it? So how do we react to change? There are two possible reactions, and I think there's a range of combining them both and everything in between, but two extremes. The first is to bury our heads in the sand and hope it will go away. We all know how ridiculous that is, but aren't there times when we all are tempted to do it? It doesn't help anyone, least of all the person burying their head. And then at the other extreme is to take heart, to prepare for the change, to embrace it and to manage it and to be in control of your life through the changes. We trust God to lead us into the future. You know, when I write a sermon, I don't write out normally every word I'm going to say. I tend to do that if I'm nervous about the situation or the congregation or the reaction I think I might have, and I read what's in front of me. But mostly I have a set of notes and they guide me through my argument. 
And sometimes I find myself spontaneously developing that argument and saying things I didn't intend to say. Normally they sound right, but I once heard myself say in a sermon, we don't know where we're going, but we're following Jesus to get there. It was an unscripted remark, and one that I'm really rather proud of. I think it could be a catchphrase for the Christian way of life. We don't know where we're going, but we're following Jesus to get there. St. Paul said something similar in a very different way in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 15. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. He talks about how we receive a spirit of sonship to embrace what we inherit and to step forward. Not today, but in some years, that verse comes in the second reading for Pentecost. But our second lesson comes always every year, the story of what happened on that day and the receiving of the Spirit, this sense that the disciples had of tongues of fire alighting on them and a mighty rushing wind. Very difficult to put into words, but something that transformed their lives. And then Peter preaches his sermon in the streets of Jerusalem. He quotes the prophet, uh, prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It's a big vision. It's full of hope. It's full of expectation. It's full of the desire that people will be listening to God will be seeing visions, dreaming dreams, and finding ways to make those a reality. It's a vision that is not just about me and my own spirituality. It's not just about me receiving the Spirit in order to develop my own personal relationship with God. That's part of it but it's about taking the gospel and proclaiming it to all people, to the ends of the earth, to quote Jesus at the end of Matthew's gospel. Starting in Jerusalem, as the Acts does, and going to the ends of the earth, in the case of Acts, to the center of civilization at that time, Rome. It's a vision to give us boldness and courage to proclaim good news of salvation and seeing people change and expecting that to happen. To embrace the love of God that the Spirit brings to us. There are two collects in our Book of Common Prayer for Pentecost. One of them we read earlier on together before our readings, and it talked about the Spirit in us. Not just me as an individual, but us as a congregation, what the Spirit is doing in us. The second one is more about the Spirit empowering us to reach out to the whole world. It's an important reminder to us as the church that we don't stay together as a holy clique. But as we open our doors, we look out, we reach out to call people in, and we go out to serve them. To take with us the gospel and proclaim it. I'd like to finish my sermon by praying with you that second collect for Pentecost. I'm calling it second because we've heard the first. It actually comes first in the prayer book. But let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. 
set abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us turn back to our liturgy and the words of the Nicene Creed as we declare the faith of our church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Okay. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear your our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. So, Father, we bring before you 
our church. We pray for a renewal of life in the Spirit. We pray for your Spirit's guidance in our search for a new rector. And we pray that even as we meet now, so the person you are calling to be our rector will be seeing our advertisement, responding to your call, and that we will be able to recognize that call and call him or her to St. Barnabas. We pray for the grace to trust you in that process. Merciful Father, accept these and all our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and against our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a greeting of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Give me passion for your purity.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you for God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And now I invite you to join me in a prayer of spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now we pray together. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. We sing our final hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It's actually every time I feel the Spirit, we sang that one last week. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you. Um, a blessed Pentecost to you all, and thank you to all those who've joined us online, um, whether live or later in the day. And of course, our service can also be viewed on our YouTube channel, um, which won't be up for a few hours after the actual time, but will be up by the end of the day. We have our normal announcements, um, but tomorrow we have our Bible study group meeting online, same login details as this service on Zoom, and that will be at 6.30 tomorrow evening. We'll be looking at the readings for the following week. But what I really want to talk to you to, about today is the fact that we now will be in a position fairly soon to regather in person for worship. And earlier this week, I received an email from our bishop lifting nearly all of the restrictions that we have been under and giving myself as your priest and our vestry the power to make decisions about when and where and how we regather, with, of course, a few limitations. So when we talked about this at our vestry meeting last week, we, it was news to us, and new, and we still have a few details to work out, well, quite a few details, really. Um, but we will be regathering in person from the first Sunday in June, that is June the 6th. We will be doing so with one service only, and it will be at 10 o'clock. It will also be broadcast in exactly the same way this service is on Zoom and Facebook and later on YouTube. And we're going to be continuing to do that for the foreseeable future. Um, in fact, we will probably do it, though it won't be my decision, of course, um, forever, because we've discovered that there are people who join us who physically cannot get to church, whether because of illness, whether because they've moved away or whatever reason. We want to make sure they're included. So from June the 6th, you can come and join us in church or you can join us online at home and you will be equally a part of the service. We decided on one service so that we don't have to do any cleaning and sanitization between two services on in a rush on the Sunday morning. And at this stage, we will only be doing the service. We won't be doing coffee hour. So any socializing will have to happen outside and so on. Um, and without um, using the coffee maker. I'm going to be writing in more detail in my weekly emails about this and exactly what it will involve. But we will be putting our chairs back and we will be keeping a social distance between people. You can sit with people you live with, of course, but we will ask that there are six feet between groups of people um, who don't live together. Um, maybe you think we're being overcautious, but isn't it far better to be cautious than to take risks? And on the same reasoning, we're also going to be wearing masks. So if you're in church, please be masked. And the only time to take that mask off is if you're doing an actual reading or when you're receiving communion. When we receive communion, we will not be sharing a common cup. The cup will be here, it'll be on the altar, but I'll be the only person who uses it. 
so that it can't be a source of passing on infection. And even if you're in tincting, you still run the risk of passing on infection through wafers you handle and through your fingers and so on. Um, I will be giving out communion in one kind with the wafer bread um, only. And to avoid touching it, what we're planning to do is to have those little paper cups that you get ketchup in if you go to a restaurant um, of a size that's a little bit bigger than the wafer. Each wafer will be in its own individual cup. You will come forward, and we've still got to work out the mechanics of this, but I will tip the wafer into your hands so that I don't touch it and you can just take it directly then. Similarly, we will be producing bulletins rather than handling the prayer books which everybody else handles, and we'll print the whole text of the service in the bulletin. Again, we're working out the mechanics of it, but we ask if you pick it up as you come in, and as you go out, you either take it home or you put it straight into a recycling bin so that other people don't have to handle it. And there will be a lot more detail, of course, to discuss about that. And um, I'm sure we'll be talking about it at coffee hour. I'll be glad to hear comments that people make. I'll be glad to answer questions that people have. And that answer may be, I'll come back to you when I thought about it. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to do this safely without risk to other people, or at least minimizing the risks to other people. So I wanted to um, be able to tell you that this morning and talk about it further. I don't think I have any other announcements at this point, except to say that looking at um, the screen of my phone and when I'm not actually reading something, being able to flick through and see other people, it's been great to see so many people um, wearing red. And if you're one of those who didn't wear red, then you're in good company because as Wayne pointed out when we arrived at the car park together, I'm not wearing red because, apart from my vestments, I forgot until I got here. So let us move to our dismissal and then please stay online to join us for an online coffee hour. Let us go forth in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.